welcome back to my channel, my Tumblr, wherever you're actually finding this. Today I'm excited about this video. I'm going to be filming a brief introduction to what stage management is and what it is that we do. The reason I've left a portion over here open and available in the screen is so that I can put some pictures and things like that into this video to give you some visuals. Most of these are going to be photos taken directly from my Instagram or from my Tumblr, so I've taken all of these photos, but I'm going to try to keep this video as short and concise as possible because no one wants to sit here and watch me rant for 20 minutes about stage management. So let's get started. So what is a stage manager? Ahem. So dictionary.com says that a stage manager is a person responsible for the technical details of a theatrical production, assisting the director during rehearsal, supervising the lighting, costuming, setting, prompting, etc. and assuming, assuming, assuming full responsibility for the stage during a performance of a play. So that's a great um, internet definition to be real technical. Basically, I like to say that a stage manager is the person who oversees everything in a production and is really responsible for making sure that everything comes together as a whole. Just one of those jobs where you're kind of in charge of everything, really. So let's break this down a little bit more now that we know the definition of a stage manager. Your role as a stage manager starts very early on, pretty much the minute you get hired. As soon as you find out what show you are working on, you're really getting started in the pre-production element of things. So that's before you have a cast or crew even, and you're just getting involved in the show, learning what the show is, and starting to get on board a lot of meetings and things like that. So at this point, you're gonna start reading through your script and marking through your script for your own purposes to note when props, scenery, costumes, projections, lighting cues, things like that are mentioned within the script. And you're really gonna wanna make sure you notate that so that when you start production meetings, if there's a missed component that no one's talking about, you can bring that up and be like, hey, so there's definitely this element here that the script mentions, but we haven't thought about that yet. And it's super helpful to just kind of be aware of what's going on within the show. Also during pre-production, you usually start attending production meetings, as mentioned before, where you take all of the notes during the meetings and you listen to all the designers and the directors talk and chat about the show, what the concept is, what direction you're going with it, and it all kind of pieces together. Lastly, during pre-production is when you usually make first contact with the cast and crew. So that's when you're going to start sending them emails and schedules and really putting together what their season is going to look like. You are in charge of usually making all of those schedules to send to them and then you also make some kind of a contact sheet so that you can keep everybody together and know who you're talking to and who is in your cast and your crew. Now we move on to rehearsals and rehearsals are a lot of fun. They can also be crazy and stressful, but you really run them essentially. Yes, the director is the one leading them and giving the direction of what you do throughout the day, but you're the one making sure everyone is there on time. You're making sure that everyone knows what we're working on. You're making sure that you have all the notes from everything that we've done today. So you really are at the helm of the whole thing. So typically your day will start after everyone arrives with blocking or learning music. So if you're doing a music rehearsal, you'll sit down with the music director and learn some music, or if you're doing choreography, maybe you'll learn some choreo. If not, you'll jump right into blocking. And so blocking is the movement of actors on stage. I like to make a blocking script that is double-sided pages. One side has the actual script and the other side has a template. I'll put a picture up here of what that looks like where you can actually write in who's moving where on what line and notate it. So it's a lot going on, but it's one of those things where when you look at the book, you can see exactly who's moving where. And then I also typically put a note section on each side so you can kind of see what notes like this actor enters with this prop. This person has a costume change here. So you can kind of keep it all together in one place. Also at the end of rehearsals, you're going to be writing another report. Remember how I mentioned meeting reports? Now you're going to be doing rehearsal reports, which is basically a report stating everything that you've done throughout the day so that all of the designers, the director, production team, everyone can be on board with what's going on. And if you had any notes about a new prop you wanna add or a scene change thing that's going on or a thing that needs to be added to a costume, you can make a note of it and send it right out to everyone who needs to know that information. After rehearsals comes everyone's favorite 
Tech Week. So Tech Week is a nightmare and a dream for a stage manager because there is a lot going on. Tech Week is when you are moving from your rehearsal space onto the actual stage or space that you are doing your production in. And so you're having a lot of new elements added on top of being a new space. You now have your set added, you have all your lights, you have your sound cues, you've got all of your props hopefully, and then you're about to add in your costumes within the next day or two. So there's just a lot going on. You typically have what's called a cue to cue day where you literally walk through the show with the actors on stage going from cue to cue. And that's when you get all of your lighting cues, sound cues, projection cues, scene change cues, all of that. And you put it in your prompt book. I will insert some photos of prompt books up here. So that's really when you're learning the show as a stage manager and then you've got your ASM and your production assistants backstage dealing with all of those backstage elements and making sure that they run smoothly while you're more looking at the full picture. Typically then during tech week you'll do Q2Q, then you'll usually, sometimes fingers crossed if you have time, get some kind of tech run in where you can run the show with all the technical elements and with music, but before you would add in an orchestra and costume. After that is when you jump right into dress rehearsals and at that point you're going to add your orchestra and you're going to add your costumes and your show's going to start to come to life. But that's really cool to start doing dress rehearsals. Usually the first one is a disaster, but everyone kind of expects that of a dress rehearsal. But it's a lot of fun and it's very stressful, high energy. And when you think about it, as the stage manager, you're really running the room. You're in charge of keeping all of these people in check. You're still making sure that the times are correct, that everyone's taking breaks when they need to, that everything's getting done, but you're moving forward at a good pace and not getting caught up on one element or one thing that's happening. Once tech happens, that's when we get into the real fun and the whole point of doing this is opening a show. And once you get into performances, there is nothing better, really and truly and honestly. Running a show is the most fun thing, especially once you kind of get it under your belt and can run the show more than once and you know what you're doing. But at that point, you're really making sure everyone gets there on time at the start of the day, making sure that the set is set up and ready to go for the correct show. You're usually gonna run a lift call or a fight call or a sound check with the actors before if you have any fight elements, people lifting each other, or if you're using microphones and need to check the sound levels or anything like that. And then once all of those things are done and you're set and ready to go, you communicate with the front of house manager to open house and get some patrons in seats. And once about 30 minutes have gone by and your theater is full, you open the show. And it is a lot, it is hard work, but it is so much fun and it is so exhausting. And a lot of people wanna show up to opening night looking cute AF, but you know what? Sometimes you just rock that greasy hair, no makeup look, and you just be happy you opened a show. So then once the show is open, you just keep this pattern going and you're finally getting in the swing of things and calling a show gets really fun. It's so much fun to sit in the booth. I didn't explain what calling a show is. So calling a show is when you actually get to sit in the booth and call all of the cues that you learned throughout tech to your light board operator, your sound board operator, to whomever else is on headset that you need to call cues to, and you run the show from start to finish. You kind of go into the zone at this moment and no one is allowed to talk to you unless they are one of your operators or your ASM, but sometimes crap hits the fan and things start going wrong and you gotta be able to think on fly about how to fix that problem while still calling your show because the last thing anybody wants to do is to hold the show. It's really, it's not fun and you don't wanna do it. So after the show ends comes the sad part when you have to strike and take everything down and that's the actors pack up all of their stuff and they leave and then you strike everything down, you tear down the set, you return props, you return costume pieces, and you make sure everything goes back to its rightful owner and you clear off the space and you vacate it. And then usually you have some kind of paperwork at the end to just kind of tie it all up and call it a day. I feel like I just rushed through this. I know this video is still probably longer than expected, but I have a lot to say about stage management and I feel like I just skimmed the bare bones here. Like I feel like I hardly said anything. So if there's any more detailed information that you want to know or more examples of things that you would like to see that I didn't get to show here, let me know. I'd be happy to do a walkthrough of a prompt book because prompt books 
are like my favorite thing to create because I love paperwork and I love making things fun and colorful and your prompt book is like your bible by the end of the show. Anyways, I won't tangent on that now, but if anyone would like to see a prompt book video, let me know if anyone wants to see, I don't know, me describing how to tape out a set. Probably not the best girl to do it. That's quite an interesting thing to explain to someone who has no idea what taping out a ground plan or taping out a set means, but I'll put a photo right here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Otherwise, thank you guys again for watching. I am so excited to be doing this and hopefully next time I will have some interesting clips to show you guys. I will be leaving next week. So once I kind of get in and settled and start having things to film, I will get out of this stuffy yellow room and into the real theater world, which is what you guys probably want to see. Stay tuned for some actual footage of me this season. You'll come along with me to Glow Lyric Theater in Greenville, South Carolina. You will get to meet all of my new friends, the cast, crew, and production team that I will be working with and I promise it will be a fun time. Anyways, thanks again for watching so much you guys. Thanks for all your love and support from the first video that I posted. Hopefully I can keep this going like I said before. Yeah, I'm just happy to be here and excited to try this project. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!